Rock and Learn! I have a reading test coming up, and I want to do really well on it. Here's this practice test so that I can get better at taking reading tests. If only I had some good tips to... Tips? Did somebody say tips? Tips are my specialty. Who are you? I'm Marco the Pencil. Take some tips from me. To do the best on your test, here are some strategies. Take a big breath and let it go. Taking a test shows what you know. Eat something healthy, but don't overeat. When you mark your test, be sure to be really neat. The night before, get a good night's rest. So you can do your best on the test. Read the questions carefully. Be sure to look for clues. Eliminate wrong answers before you choose. Stick around and I'll show you some more So you can make your very best score Yeah! That sounds good to me! Mike Mechanical, your friendly mechanical pencil here with this news flash. This is a practice test. Marco will be marking on the practice test to help explain his test-taking tips. But before you write on any test, make sure that it is okay with your teacher. If you are not allowed to write on the test, then don't do it. Marco's strategies will still help you learn other tips on how to do your best. Great! I will show you some tricks to help you do your best on a reading test. The most important thing is to be able to read well, and that means practicing reading as much as you can. If you do that, and follow my tips, you'll do great! The first thing to do is read the questions at the end of a passage before you read the passage. Don't read the answers, just the questions. Then look for the answers to the questions as you read the passage. Underline any sentences that might help you answer the questions as you read. Let's take that out for a test spin. Okay, they don't call me lead foot for nothing. Here's a letter to read and some questions. Let's look at the questions before we read, so we have an idea of what we should be looking for. Remember, only read the questions and not the answer choices. 1. What does Tony not like to do when he goes to the pond? 2. How did Mr. Turtles get his name? 3. Why did Tony write this letter? 4. How does Tony feel about Mr. Turtles jumping into the bathtub with him? 5. How will Grandma recognize Mr. Turtles when she visits? 6. Who is writing this letter? Now let's read the letter and look for some answers. Dear Grandma, how are you? Andy and I are already having a lot of fun this summer. We walk down to the pond at the end of the street every day. I don't like to fish, so I catch frogs and look at clouds while Andy goes fishing. Look at this! Question number one is answered here. Let's underline it. And put a one with a circle so we can find it easily when we're answering the questions. Now, let's go on. One day on the way to the pond, we heard a small barking sound. Andy set his fishing gear down and went with me to check it out. In the brush, we found a puppy barking and barking at a turtle. The poor turtle was pulled into his shell just as far as he could possibly go. That's not very nice, I said to the puppy. What if you were a turtle? You wouldn't want a puppy barking at you. Hey, let's call him Mr. Turtles, said Andy. Aha! Now we know the answer to question number two. We'll underline all of this part of the letter. Put a two with a circle. And keep reading. That's a great idea, I said. Maybe that will make him be nice to turtles. I doubt that, replied Andy. 
I played with Mr. Turtles the rest of the afternoon while Andy fished. I taught Mr. Turtles to fetch sticks and play chase in the tall grass. We even took a little nap together in the shade. All the way home, I couldn't help but wonder if Mom would let us keep Mr. Turtles. Finally, I asked my brother what he thought. I think she will if he doesn't belong to anybody else, answered Andy. The next day, on the way to the pond, Andy and I put up signs that told about the puppy we had found. Mom said that if no one claims him in a week, then we can keep him. Oh, Mr. Turtles, I hope no one calls about you, I said. Then I gave him a big hug. Andy didn't get to do much fishing that day. I kept splashing in the pond with Mr. Turtles. Finally, Andy put down his fishing pole and joined us. Andy swam out deep in the pond. The puppy tried to follow Andy, but because Mr. Turtles was lifting his paws way out of the water, his tail was sinking. He doesn't know how to swim, laughed Andy. Well, maybe we should teach him, I replied. We swam all afternoon, but you have to be careful not to let a dog get too close when he's learning to swim. He can accidentally scratch you. Finally, Mr. Turtles got the hang of it. That night, Andy left the bathroom door open, and Mr. Turtles came up and looked at me playing in my bubble bath. He watched me for a while, and then he decided to jump in the tub with me. I guess he thought he needed more practice swimming. He's a funny puppy. Do you see what I see? Underline that last sentence. It helps us to answer question number four. Notice that we do not always find answers to the questions in order as we read. Let's read on. I'll send you some pictures of Mr. Turtles when Mom prints them for me. Then you will know who he is when you come see us. What's this? Two questions are answered here. Now we know the answers to questions three and five. Just a little more reading to do. I love you, Grandma. Your grandson, Tony. And there's the answer to question number six. Right at the very end. Now we'll mark our answers to the questions. As we do, we'll use another one of my test-taking tricks. Read the questions carefully. Sometimes students will pass over a specific word in the question, and doing that will cause them to get it wrong. But you'll be careful not to do that. 1. What does Tony not like to do when he goes to the pond? A. Catch frogs. B. Look at clouds. C. Swim. D. Catch fish. Let's see. The word not in the question is very important. If we missed that, we might mark the wrong answer. But we read the question carefully. Now we can look back at the parts we underlined for the answer. Look here. See how the underlining helps us? We can quickly find the answer to this question. And it is... D. Catch fish. Notice how I am careful to fill in the circle completely and neatly, staying in the lines. You should do that too, so that all of your correct answers get counted. We'll use another tip for this next question. Read all the choices carefully. 2. How did Mr. Turtles get his name? A. He is a turtle. No, 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 no. Mr. Turtles is a dog. B. He swims like a turtle. Another wrong answer. C. He was barking at a turtle when the boys found him. Ah, that looks like the right one. But let's read all of the answers to be sure. D. He walks as slow as a turtle. No. I still think the answer is C. Let's look back at our underlines to be sure. Yes. The answer is... C. He was barking at a turtle when the boys found him. He 
Here's an important thing to remember. Don't choose an answer just because it is a fact from the text. Make sure it really answers the question asked. Look at this one. 3. Why did Tony write this letter? A. To teach his new dog how to swim. That is something that happens in the story, but it is not why the letter was written. I don't think dogs can read very well. B. To tell his grandma about his new puppy. That looks right, but we'll read the other answers just to be sure. C. To ask his grandma to come see him. Hmm, the letter doesn't really ask for a visit. This one is wrong too. D. To make sure Mr. Turtles didn't belong to anyone. Here's another one that is part of the story, but it is not the reason for the letter, so it does not answer the question. The answer is... B. To tell his grandma about his new puppy. When you read something on a test, look for clues that tell you how the author might feel about the people, places, or things he or she is writing about. The answers to some questions are not always directly written down, like with this question. 4. How does Tony feel about Mr. Turtles jumping into the bathtub with him? Nothing we underline directly answers this question, but look at this. Here we see that Tony thinks it is funny when Mr. Turtles gets into his bath. So let's keep that in mind as we look at the answers. A. He is amused. That makes sense. If you think something is funny, you're amused. This is probably the answer. But let's read them all before we mark our choice. B. He is angry with Mr. Turtles. Being mad is not funny. C. He is scared of Mr. Turtles. Fear is also not funny. D. He doesn't want Mr. Turtles anymore. Oh my, that's wrong too. So the correct answer really is A. He is amused. Oops! I started filling in the wrong bubble. I need to be sure and erase it completely. So the right answer will be counted. A. He is amused. On to the next question. Remember to read all the choices carefully. 5. How will Grandma recognize Mr. Turtles when she visits? A. Tony's description of Mr. Turtles. There really isn't much about how Mr. Turtles looks in the letter. B. The pictures Tony drew of Mr. Turtles. There were some pictures, but I didn't read anything about drawing. C. The photos Tony sends to Grandma. This one seems right. Look at what we underlined. I'll send you some pictures of Mr. Turtles when Mom prints them for me. Then you will know who he is when you come see us. But let's look at the last possible answer to make sure. D. She has seen Mr. Turtles before. That's not likely, since Tony only recently found the dog. The answer is... C. The photos Tony sends to Grandma. If you need to read the passage or parts of it again, go ahead. Use what you reread to help pick your answer. Let's try doing that with this question. 6. Who is writing this letter? A. Andy B. Grandma C. Tony D. Mr. Turtles We can look back at the end of the letter to find the name of the sender. The answer is... C. Tony 
Wow, we flew through those questions. Well, I am one of the original, right, brothers? <laughs> <laughs> There is something I feel I must mention at this point. Before taking tests, it's usually a good idea to have a number two. Marco, that's a little gross. Not that kind of number two. I meant a number two pencil. But since you brought it up... Restroom breaks are highly recommended before starting your test. You want to be comfortable. It is also good to stretch between each reading passage. <gasps> now we're ready for the next story. First, we'll read the questions that come after this story. Seven. Where did Ed find the tape, scissors, and markers? Eight. Who is Jill? Nine. What does the word particular mean in this passage? Ten. Why is Jill mad at Ed? 11. Why did Ed give Jill the butterfly rug? Now on to the story. The Gift. The Gift. Ed waited and waited. He was waiting for a chance to sneak into Jill's room. Finally, his older sister left her room to get a snack. Now we know who Jill is for question number eight. We'll just underline that. And read on. At her desk, he found the tape, a pair of scissors, and her big bucket of markers. And there's the answer to question number seven. He was going to make her the prettiest birthday present ever. This may help us to answer question number eleven. Let's underline... Just in case. Ed hung his head and sighed as he walked past the big stain on Jill's carpet from yesterday. This could be a clue to help us answer question number 10. Jill might be mad about the carpet stain. He was very careful not to move anything except for the supplies he was borrowing. Jill was very particular about keeping her room clean. There's the word particular. This last sentence will help us answer question number nine. We'll underline it. Everything was kept in its proper place unless it was being used. Just as Ed was about to make a break down the hall to his room, Jill came around the corner. What were you doing in my room, yelled Jill. I just wanted to borrow some things to make a picture, cried Ed. I told you that you aren't allowed in my room anymore. If you need to borrow anything, you have to ask. Maybe I'll let you borrow it, and maybe I won't, scolded Jill. Then she went into her room. Her little brother stared at the closed door and listened as her stereo got louder. I guess she's still mad at me, whispered Ed. I've got to make this her best birthday present ever. Carefully, he carried the hidden supplies down to his room. Ed got the butterfly rug out of the shopping bag Mom had given him. He put it in a box and wrapped it carefully. He wrapped it with the white side of the wrapping paper facing outward so that he could draw his own designs. Ed drew a picture of Jill and himself playing together. On the next side, he put a picture of them drawing together. On the last two sides without folds, he made a picture of a flower and of a butterfly. He smiled as he looked at his work. That night, after the family sang happy birthday to Jill, Ed ran to get his gift out of his room. So it's Jill's birthday, huh? Many people get presents on their birthdays. Not me, of course. This could help us with question number 11. I picked this out just for you, and I decorated it myself, said Ed. Jill looked at each of the pictures. I can't stay mad at you forever, she said, as she opened the box. I know you like butterflies, and I wanted you to be able to cover up the place where the marker leaked, Ed explained as Jill pulled the rug out of the box. More help for question number 11. 
There are many reasons why Ed gave Jill the butterfly rug. Oh, Ed, it matches my room perfectly. I guess we can be art buddies again. I forgive you, Jill said as she gave him a hug. Ed beamed. Jill had given him a gift on her birthday, the gift of forgiveness. Now let's answer the questions. Remember, you may reread parts of the passage if you need help. Especially those parts we have underlined. 7. Where did Ed find the tape, scissors and markers? A. In Jill's closet B. In the kitchen C. At Jill's desk D. At school Ed was never in the closet or the kitchen or at school. We are left with only C. And we can check that by looking back at our underlining. Ed found the art supplies at Jill's desk. Let's mark answer C. At Jill's desk. 8. Who is Jill? A. Jill is Ed's younger sister. B. Jill is Ed's older sister. C. Jill is Ed's mom. D. Jill is Ed's cousin. Let's look back at our underlining. Ah, Ed was waiting to sneak into Jill's room. His older sister. The answer is B. Jill is Ed's older sister. Oops, better fill that one in a little more. There, on to the next question. 9. What does the word particular mean in this passage? A. Picky B. Lazy C. Unconcerned D. Happy When you are asked for the definition of a word, scan what you read to find that word. Sometimes the word will already be italicized or underlined for you. Instead of rereading everything, we can look quickly for the word. That is what scanning means. Luckily for us, we underlined the sentence with the word particular. Read the sentence that comes before the sentence with the word. Then read the sentence with the word. And then the next sentence. Usually, this will tell you what you need to know to answer the question. In this case... He was very careful not to move anything except for the supplies he was borrowing. Jill was very particular about keeping her room clean. Everything was kept in its proper place unless it was being used. If we think about using each answer in place of the word particular, we can find the one that makes the most sense. A. Picky. That could work. Jill is very picky about her room. B. Lazy. Not so much. A lazy person would not care about keeping a clean room. C. Unconcerned. This sounds like the opposite of what we're looking for. D. Happy. This is not as obviously wrong as B and C, but I think the better choice is A. Picky. Like reading, scanning is a great skill to practice. On we go! 10. Why is Jill mad at Ed? A. Jill wanted Ed to get her a snack. B. Ed did not want to be art buddies with Jill. C. Ed scared Jill when she came back to her room. D. Ed used a marker that leaked on Jill's carpet yesterday. Sometimes we are not given the exact answers in what we read. We have to be like a detective and use the clues we are given. Looking back through what we underlined, we see that Ed was sad when he passed by a big stain on Jill's carpet. Because he hung his head, Ed may have been the one who caused the stain. 
Also, look here. Ed gives Jill a rug to cover up a marker stain. So we will choose D. Ed used a marker that leaked on Jill's carpet yesterday. I get the point. <laughs> but of course you do. And now, the last question for this story. Eleven. Why did Ed give Jill the butterfly rug? A. To cover up the stain on the carpet in her room. B. She likes butterflies. C. For her birthday. D. All of the above. Remember that we marked many reasons why Ed might give Jill the rug. Let's scan back through them. Here we see that Jill liked butterflies and that the rug was to cover a stain. And here we see that it is Jill's birthday. So A, B and C are all correct. That means that D, all of the above, is the correct answer. That's how we do it in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania? <laughs> I thought that's where you were from. <laughs> Let's look ahead at the questions for our last example. 12. What word is a synonym for habitat? 13. What would be a good title for this article? 14. What was the first thing that happened? 15. What is a moat filled with? 16. How did the zoo workers make it easy for visitors to watch Tito swim? Let's read. A new animal came to the zoo earlier this week. The animal is an Asian small-clawed otter named Tito. Before he arrived, the zoo workers spent a lot of time making a new place or habitat for the otter to live. There's the word habitat. We may need to look at this part of the article to answer question number 12. They made a moat all the way around an island and put fish in it. So, there are fish in the moat. That can help us with question number 15. On the island, they planted trees and plants. The workers wanted Tito to like his new home. The Asian small-clawed otter is the smallest of all the otters. The zoo wanted people to be able to see Tito up close. They built a tunnel under the moat. It goes to a viewing area with windows. Visitors can watch Tito swim through the water in the moat and catch fish. Aha! There is also water in the moat. More information for question number 15. I'm also going to underline the sentences about the zoo workers making a place to watch Tito. To help us with question number 16. Outside his new home, the zoo placed signs to tell visitors all about the new otter. An Asian small-clawed otter has a smooth coat. It is covered in brown fur with white on its face, throat, and chest. These otters talk with each other using 12 different calls. To catch food, the otters use their hands and long fingers. The zoo has planned a party for Tito's arrival. Kids can get balloons and can get their faces painted. Now, to answer the questions. 12. What word is a synonym for habitat? A. Home B. Zoo C. Path D. Bed When you are looking for synonyms, or words with the same meaning, Try putting the answer choices into the original sentence. The sentence is here. Before he arrived, 
The zoo workers spent a lot of time making a new place or habitat for the otter to live. Let's try that with each answer. Before he arrived, the zoo workers spent a lot of time making a new place or home for the otter to live. I think that may be our answer. But let's look at the other choices. Before he arrived, the zoo workers spent a lot of time making a new place or zoo for the otter to live. No, they did not build an entire zoo. The habitat is part of the zoo. Before he arrived, the zoo workers spent a lot of time making a new place or path for the otter to live. A path is not a very good place for an otter to live. Before he arrived, the zoo workers spent a lot of time making a new place or bed for the otter to live. Maybe Tito has a bed in his new home, but that is only part of it. So we are left with... A. Home. 13. What would be a good title for this article? A. A new arrival at the zoo. B. Tito goes swimming. C. The smooth coat of otters. D. Zoo workers finish the job. We cannot find the answer to this question directly in the article, but here is a tip. The title of an article or story often states the main idea of the article or story. The main idea is most often at the very beginning and it may be stated again at the very end. So let's look at the beginning of the article. A new animal came to the zoo earlier this week. That makes answer A, a new arrival at the zoo, sound like a good choice. Now, look at the end of the article. The zoo has planned a party for Tito's arrival. Kids can get balloons and can get their faces painted. More support for answer A. The other answers are all part of the article. But the best title choice is A. A new arrival at the zoo. 14. What was the first thing that happened? A. Tito arrived. B. The zoo workers made a habitat. C. Tito went swimming. D. Tito talked to the zoo workers. When you are putting events in order, look for words like first, next, then, before, after, and finally to help you decide when things happen. Also use common sense. Here's what I mean. Tito could not go swimming before he arrived. And Tito is an otter, so he cannot talk. That leaves us with only A and B. I hope very much for Tito's sake that he had a place to live before he arrived. Let's look at the article to be sure. Before he arrived, the zoo worker spent a lot of time making a new place or habitat for the otter to live. This tells us that the answer is B. The zoo workers made a habitat. 15. What is a moat filled with? A. Dirt B. Marbles C. Water D. Plastic Let us look back at what we have underlined. Here we see that fish are in the moat. And here we see that the moat has water in it. Since fish is not a choice, we will mark C, water, as the correct answer. 16. How did the zoo workers make it easy for visitors to watch Tito swim? A. They gave them goggles. B. They built a tunnel to a viewing area with windows. C. 
Tito doesn't like to swim. D. Visitors pay money to swim with Tito. We underlined a part of the article about workers building a place to watch Tito. Ah, they built a tunnel under the moat. It goes to a viewing area with windows. Visitors can watch Tito swim through the water in the moat and catch fish. There's nothing here about goggles. And the visitors can watch Tito swim. Although it sounds like fun, I don't remember anything about paying to swim with Tito. That leaves only... B. They built a tunnel to a viewing area with windows. Which is just what the part we underlined says. I've given you a lot of pointers as we've answered the questions. Now let's review the tips to sharpen our skills. Read the questions first. Then look for the answers as you read the passage. Underline sentences that will help you and write down the question number so you can come back to it later. Remember, only write on your test if your teacher says it's okay. You're right. Read the questions carefully. Don't skip any words in the question that could make you get it wrong. Look for negative words such as not, the opposite of, antonym, or except that can change what the question means. When looking for synonyms or words with the same meaning, try putting the answers into the original sentence. Read all of the answers carefully. Reread what you underline to look for answers. Don't just count on your memory. Double check by reading the parts you need to read again. Don't choose an answer just because it is a fact from the text. Make sure it really answers the question asked. When asked for the definition of a word, scan the passage for the word. It may be italicized, underlined, or bold. Read the sentence that comes before the sentence with the word, then read the sentence with the word, and then the next sentence. Usually, this will tell you what you need to know to answer the question. Practice the skill of scanning so you can find things quickly without rereading everything. When asked to put events in order, look for words like first, before, next, then, after, and finally. The main idea of a passage is most often at the very beginning and it may also be at the very end. Try to think of what the whole story is about. Look for clues that would tell you how the author might feel about the people, places, or things he or she is writing about. And here's a bonus tip. Keep track of the questions you are unsure about. Finish the other questions for that passage and then go back to them. And last but not least, be sure to erase any stray marks or wrong answers completely. These tips can help you do well on a reading test. But guess what really keeps me on my toes? Uh, the pencil sharpener? Besides that! To be really good at a reading test, you want to become a fantastic reader. That means lots of practice. This may sound a little hard or boring to some people, but it's absolutely not if you follow my secret strategy. The best way to become a great reader is to find a series of books or an author that you love reading. When you find what is right for you, reading can be more fun than playing video games or watching TV. Now how do you find these high interest books that make you want to read more and more and more? Shh, here's the secret. 
There are people who are very, very willing to help you. You might ask a librarian or someone who works at a bookstore about books, comics or magazines that you will truly enjoy. Now, every person is different and you're no exception. You may have to try several different series before you find one that is perfect for you. But when you finally come across that right series, bada bing! Is it like magic? You will discover that reading is one of your favorite hobbies. That's because your mind will paint beautiful pictures while you are reading exciting, high interest stories. So don't give up. Be sharp. Go find books that are fun for you. For making good grades in school and doing well on reading tests, I may have just given you the best tip that you will ever hear. I hope you've had as much fun as I have. May you pass your next test and all the others with flying colors. What do you do when you're not helping kids learn how to do better on tests? Well, let's just say I have a little night job. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Mechanical here, and we're in for a special treat tonight at the Golden Stylist Comedy Room. All the way from Pennsylvania, will you please welcome the king of one-liners, Marco the Pencil! everyone! Oh my my! It's so great to be back at the Golden Stylus! I'm feeling really sharp tonight! <laughs> what dog can jump higher than a building? Any dog, because buildings can't jump! <laughs> what is the tallest building in the world? The library, because it has the most stories! Why did the fish go to the library? To find some bookworms. <laughs> Why do pencils stay away from gas stations? Because they're afraid of becoming unleaded. <laughs> Where are happiness and contentment always found? The dictionary. <laughs> What's the longest word in the dictionary? Smiles, because it has a mile between the S's. <laughs> you see, between S and... forget it. What word is always spelled incorrectly? I-N-C-O-R-R-E-C-T-L-Y Incorrectly! How many pencils does it take to change a light bulb? If the pencils are as bright as me, who needs a light bulb? <laughs> Incidentally, does anyone know where the Declaration of Independence was signed? At the bottom, of course! <laughs> what is an eight-letter word that only has one letter in it? Envelope. Take away my first letter, take away my second. Take away all my letters and I still remain the same. What am I? A postman. <laughs> if the number two is the most popular pencil, then why isn't it number one? <laughs> How is the letter A like a flower? They both have B's after them. What letter is always wet? The C. <laughs> Why can't pencils grow beards? Because they're always shaving. <laughs> the band is starting up and that tells me we're almost out of time. When you're taking a test, you want to do your best, that's no problem. <laughs>
It's just stay with me and learn good strategies That's no problem No, no, no The tips I can show will soon make you a pro That's no problem Together we'll pass and perhaps have some laughs That's no problem hey, Good night everybody Keep those cards and letters coming As we say in Pennsylvania Don't forget to write